is everything you ever wanted. One moment. Supercross from Phoenix is next. But today, the green grass field is covered in tons of dirt, forming triple jumps and whoop sections as the Amped Mobile Supercross Series comes to the Valley of the Sun. Hi, everybody. I'm Ralph Shaheen, alongside former Supercross champion Jeff Emick. Let's show you what we got on tap for you on our menu here today. We got a lot of great stuff as we're going to show you qualifying highlights from the Supercross heat races. We'll have an up-close look at Chad Reed, the former series champion, and of course, a 20 rider, 20 lap main event. Now, when they drop the gate on that main event, there'll be three main riders we'll be talking a lot about today. Of course, Chad Reed, and we've got Ricky Carmichael, the five-time champion, and the man who won his 13th race just last week in Anaheim, California, James Stewart, Jeff. Yeah, last week, James Stewart was so fast. He had a lot to prove after going up to Canada for the World Championship rounds and not winning. He still fell once in the main event, still ended up winning by a pretty good margin. Well, there's a very unique racetrack here in Chase Field, but there's one section of rhythm section in particular, Jeff, that's very unique. Here we take a look at the first rhythm section out of the first turn. The riders are going to be able to jump in two or three different ways. One of the most difficult, though, is actually doubling the first two, tripling the next three, and then jumping a quad out of there. That takes us over to the other rhythm section on the track. Once again, a couple different lines. The riders are going to jump over the first tabletop, triple the next one, and then the faster guys will triple onto the next tabletop, and that's going to produce some fast lap times. Before we get started with the racing action here in Phoenix, let's show you how the season got underway. Back in December in Toronto, Chad Reed and James Stewart got together, but watch what happens when Stewart comes on track. A huge crash with Travis Preston. They would be okay. The Australian Reed goes on to a huge win in Toronto. Off to Vancouver, we went in BC Place, where Ricky Carmichael got a big win just before the Christmas break. Last weekend in Anaheim, the first race here in the States, Carmichael got around Stewart when Stewart fell down, but James chased him down and took the lead and took the win, his second win in his career at Anaheim 1. Here's a look at the Amp Mobile World GP point standings. Carmichael leads by two over James Stewart. Now, the Amp Mobile AMA Series got underway just last weekend in Anaheim 1. Stewart, with the win there, has a three-point lead over the man that finished in second, Ricky Carmichael. And as you can see, Chad Reed in the thick of the points chase in both title fights. When we come back to Phoenix, Chad Reed and the rest will get the program underway. And we'll have the action from the heat races from Chase Field after this, here on CBS. CBS Sports Spectacular presents the Amped Mobile AMA Supercross Series, sponsored by Toyota. Moving forward. Amped Mobile, more mobile than you're used to. And by Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. Here's our Supercross 411. 
two heats tonight. Top nine advance straight to the main event. Each one of those heats will have 20 riders, and they'll be racing for eight laps. The last chance qualifier will have 22 riders. It'll go for six laps. Just the top two riders will move on. They'll fill out our 20 rider, 20 lap main event. Of course, in our main event, you earn points towards not only the AMA Series Championship, but also the World Supercross GP Series title. Ricky Carmichael running an abbreviated schedule this year. You'll get to see a lot of Ricky's races right here on CBS. He's going to run in San Francisco, inside the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, St. Louis, the big speedway in Daytona, and he'll finish it off in Orlando. Ricky, of course, wrapping things up in Florida. He is up for the name. Carmichael has given Phoenix fans many thrills over the years. The Florida Phenom earned his first win here in Phoenix back in 2001. Besting stars Jeremy McGrath and David Bellman to earn the victory. In 2002, Phoenix was the site of Carmichael's first win for Big Red. RC would win 11 races for Honda during the season and captured his second title. After taking 2004 off due to injury, Carmichael returned on board a Suzuki. It was in Phoenix that he claimed his first win of the season and route to the 2005 title. And just last season, the GOAT gave Roger DeCoster and Suzuki their first victory on a four-stroke motorcycle right here at Chase Field. What is your favorite Carmichael moment? Log on to supercrossonline.com backslash RC to vote and for your chance to win an autographed Ricky Carmichael jersey. Let's take a look at our Air Force up close for heat number one. This will be an eight lap race. We'll have 20 riders in the gate. Top nine transfers straight to the main event. 10th through 20th, they have a little bit more work in front of them as they will try to transfer to the main through the last chance qualifier. Riders are in the gate. Let's show you our starting grid for heat number one, brought to you by the Air Force, James Stewart. The biggest name in this one alongside of Chad Reed, those two. Everybody expecting to be in the title fight throughout the season. Reed, of course, a former champion. Stewart won the Amp Mobile World Supercross GP title last year. Ivan Tedesco considered to be a player throughout the season as well on the Makita Suzuki. There's James Stewart. James Stewart just going through a pre-race ritual here, getting his gloves situated just where he wants them, where the, the wrist on his jersey, locking him in all in the perfect place. Adjusting his goggles uh, numerous times, like almost every rider does. Chad Reed, one of the grittiest athletes on the entire planet. Chad Reed only got a chance to ride on Wednesday of this week, just a little bit to see where he, you know, see how he felt. And his body is very sore still. as a couple of riders fall down to the first corner. Reed trying to hold on. We got David Billman up there in second place, really fast in the second qualifying practice today, so look for a great night from him. That's Nick Way on the 27, a privateer rider, teammate to David Billman, who sits in second. So those two getting a real good start. Well, I think both of these guys have been pushing each other. Nick Way, actually, in the rhythm section after the first turn, Nick Way was the first rider of practice to jump the last four through that rhythm section. A huge quad at the end of where we're at right here. Let's see if he does it again. Here's Stewart already starting to pull away on that Kawasaki number seven. Look at how fast he is through the whoop section. Filament just as quick and way right behind him. One other reason why those two riders, Villaman and Way, are so fast. David told me that they expected some new engine parts that would help them with mid-range power and top end power. And the start straight here coming out of the gate in Chase Field is very long. A good opportunity for the bikes number 27 and 12 to really get up to power. And it worked. They're running in second and third. Now Way getting in front of his teammate and Ivan Tedesco on the Makita Suzuki running right along in fourth, the bright yellow machine. Yeah, here we take a look at that rhythm section. Both the guys jumping it all ended up pretty equal there. Nobody seems to be jumping that quad at the end like I was talking about. But look at Ivan Tedesco coming up the inside here. This guy's hand is still swollen from uh, uh, the fractures that he had of the World Championship rounds. And uh, 
He's, he's looking for a whole lot better result this weekend. Anaheim won. He was, he was really disappointed after that event. I think uh, Suzuki wants a bigger effort from him this weekend also. And, you know, Ivan Tedesco was a champion. He wants a bigger effort from himself, too. He's going to demand more out of his body than what he gave it last weekend. There's a good look at Nick Way. I tell you, Ralph, that, that rhythm section through there, just a couple of years ago, that would have been uh, even, I mean, that'd be big, but these 450s are just, uh, they got so much power, it makes it look easy. Chad Reed on the blue 22, fighting for fifth place, battling it out with the 32 machine of Ryan Clark. Oh! And Ryan Clark makes a huge mistake. Uh, Chad Reed passed him on the outside, and he just kind of went straight up into the burn and stuffed the front wheel. And took out Paul Carpenter in, in the process on the 37. Yeah, and which probably going to put those guys back around the bubble there uh, for uh, qualifying. Let's go back and take a look at what happened here with Reed. Reed just goes around the outside of him. And it just looks like... Clark just doesn't doesn't stop. Maybe he got a, a rock in his rear brake or something like that because it really appeared that he just kept going straight. Do you think he was maybe trying to block pass and just mistimed it? No, I don't think so. I, I, it was a really strange uh, incident there, but nothing strange about number seven. This guy, since the AMA Championship Series has started, he has been all business and uh, all but a couple of qualifying rounds, he has been the fastest guy and set the very fastest lap times. And you see the rider's name scrolling across the top of the screen. Those in green hold the transfer positions. Those listed in red still looking to improve and maybe get themselves out of the last chance qualifier straight into the main. There goes David Villeman running in second place. And then it's Nick Way and Tedesco still running in third and fourth. That's becoming a pretty good fight. Yes, it is. And as we take a look at Tedesco, remember, he did not even practice all week. He did not ride from the main event of Anaheim 1 until the first round of qualifying practice today. And when you're looking at two privateer riders, Villamid and Nick Way, and they're sandwiched between two factory back riders in Stewart and Tedesco, that shows you how well that team is coming along. Yeah, they definitely have uh, got some engine packages together and have, have got their testing program together because that team is, you know, it's relatively a young team, especially when you consider that uh, factory Kawasaki and Suzuki have been racing since the early 70s. And needless to say, the privateer teams don't get all the really good go-fast parts that the factory riders get. But they are fortunate that there's uh, some aftermarket companies out there that have some knowledgeable technicians and uh, R&D people that help bring, you know, uh, you know high-performance equipment to uh, not only to these guys, um, but to the uh, consumers also. Stewart on the last lap here at Chase Field for heat number one. Oh, boy, he almost got it up on the front wheel there. Yeah, he had to back off because of that lap rider, and uh, it's kind of tricky. It's, it's, a, it's actually easier and safer just to go your regular speed, and when you have to slow it down, uh, little mistakes can happen. James Stewart making his way to the finish line jump. He'll take the win in heat number one here on the Kawasaki number seven. He's going straight to the main event. Remember, the top nine riders will transfer through. Villamin is going, Way is going, and Ivan Tedesco will also go straight to the main event. Here's a look at the M Mobile results from heat number one. James Stewart takes the win, but David Villamin and Nick Way looking pretty strong tonight. And Ivan Tedesco brings the Suzuki home in fourth. Racing underway here in Chase Field. Plenty more coming your way here on CBS. Heat two when we come back to Phoenix. Scores, outspoken riders, exclusive video, award-winning fantasy sports, and highlights from this event. Go to CBSSportsLine.com. Seeing a lot of signs like that here in Phoenix. Everybody going to miss Ricky. Heat two getting set to get underway. Here's our Thor up close for heat number two. Again, this will be an eight-lap race with 20 more riders, and nine more will advance to the main event. Everybody else on to the LCQ. Let's show you the highlights now from heat number two. Travis 
Preston, the rider with the number 11 on the back of his jersey. Now Burns is actually uh, currently fifth place right now. And uh, fifth place is good enough to qualify, but knowing Michael Burton the way I do, he wants to get out and put in a really good heat race here, get as far up as he can. Well, it looks like he's gotten around Preston. Trying to move up another spot. Tyler Evans with a huge off in the whoop section. Checkered flag for Carmichael. He takes the heat win. Ricky Carmichael sits atop the Amp Mobile Supercross results from heat number two. Kevin Windham, Michael Burton, Travis Preston, Nathan Ramsey's Yamaha round out the top five. CBS Sports coverage of Amp Mobile Supercross will return after this message and a word from your local station. So you wanna be a rap superstar and live large, big house, five cars, you're in charge, coming up in the world, don't trust nobody, gotta look over your shoulder constantly. Arizona packed to the rooftop tonight, large crowd on hand to watch the Ant Mobile Supercross series as it returns to the Valley of the Sun. Here's our MMI race fact for you. The series all began back in July of 1972 in the L.A. Coliseum. It actually wasn't really a series back then, but that first race was won by Marty Trice. A lot of fans and a lot of champions have crossed in front of packed grandstands over the years. Back in 2004, it was Chad Reed. Let's meet Chad up close now. Five laps remaining, Chad Reed is doing his championship, slipping away. Vegas was hard. It was really hard to deal with. While these two celebrate, Chad Reed dejectedly rides off the course. You know, I can't lie, I'm disappointed, and I really wanted to win that title, but uh, hey, I was, I was the third best guy. It was a hard year to, to deal with, the ups, the downs. You know, I was the third best guy. You know, that was what was hard to swallow at the end of the night, you know, just to see that the title was only a couple of bike lengths ahead of you. You can hear the crowd come to life, Stuart around the inside. What an aggressive move. The and this Roger Center crowd is on their feet and cheering. Here he comes. Here you go. <laughs> Stewart back at it. Oh, contact right there. Reese front wheel right in the back row. Stewart and he's on the track. Stewart, no, he's back. Oh, and Stewart goes down. A large contingent from the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians. His new sponsors came all the way to Toronto to watch him, and Chad Reed's going to give them a victory in the opening round. So number 22, Chad Reed retakes the lead. Ricky Carmichael, number four, is in second. And what a show. I do the best I can for those guys, and uh, lucky to have you know Larry Brooks. That's uh, you know being there, done it before, and Larry's being there through Jeremy's you know career when he when they changed over to the you know Chaparral deal and everything like that. And it's kind of nice to have you know a relationship that I have with Yamaha, and then in the past you know Larry also. So uh, you know we, we have a we have a great team that is uh, coming out with some really neat stuff. Chad Reed, a true champion, one of the grittiest athletes in Supercross. He's already transferred on to the main event. Here's a look at our Yamaha last chance qualifying results. Top two riders from here will join Chad and the rest in the main event, Kyle Lewis and Jason Thomas. Well, the racing from the heat races and the last chance qualifiers are completed. It's been a wild round of competition here at Chase Field, but the main event is still to go here in Phoenix on CBS. Look from center field towards home plate and high up over home plate is where we are sitting. Hi everybody, Ralph Sheen once again alongside former Supercross champion Jeff Emmett getting ready for the main event. Now we've seen all the big name riders, James Stewart, Chad Reed, and Ricky Carmichael run very strong. We also saw some privateer riders, especially Nick Way and David Villeman, very quick. Can they possibly steal a win? 
Well, I got a feeling that somebody is, is going to surprise us with the whole shot. Maybe Nick Way, maybe uh, you know Tim Ferry, David Vilman. But I think lap 18, 19, and especially 20, you're going to see Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart battling it out. Before we drop the gate on the main, let's check in for a Progressive Direct free race report with Aaron Bates. Well, this is it. The beginning of the end for the greatest all-time Ricky Carmichael's full-time racing career. The next time we're going to see him will be in San Francisco as he shoots his focus from two wheels to four. He said earlier this afternoon, though, Phoenix is probably one of the most memorable tracks that he's actually been on. He's won here four times on three different brands of bikes. And he's also the only rider in history to have back-to-back -back wins. Ricky sporting a baseball looking pinstripe riding gear as we show you our up close for the main event. It's 20 laps, 20 riders, 25 points going towards the AMA championship to the winner. Here's our Honda starting grid, and you will notice there's actually one extra rider, Paul Carpenter, taking advantage using a provisional to make it into the main event. Carmichael, Stewart, Chad Reed, maybe Villamin or Way. Yeah, I'm thinking that uh, somebody else is going to surprise us with the whole shot here tonight. Here's I, the onboard camera. I think Michael Byrne on the Rockstar Suzuki is a prime candidate, a great starter, and uh, she would be great for our helmet cam to see him out front. Award, but then James Stewart just snuck by on the inside down that first first rhythm section. Stewart blasts out of that big corner, and here comes Carmichael on the four. He's got a he's got a little bit of work ahead of him. He's got some uh, some guys that are putting in some really good rides tonight in front of him, and he doesn't want to let Stewart check out any further than what he is right now, but I think it's going to be hard to stop that. He's trying to catch Kevin Windham. This is the view from Michael Byrne right behind him on the Rockstar Suzuki. And behind Byrne is Chad Reed. Windham definitely got something to prove, had a less than desirable main event last week. I think his team's looking for him to uh, really Show some determination and uh, put in 20 great laps tonight. A key thing to remember, Jeff, is that Ricky Carmichael has been the fastest rider here in Phoenix every time he's been on the track. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's had a great weekend. Looks like they got the Suzuki dialed in. Just goes past David Billman there. And what they worked on this week from, An from last week at Anaheim 1 was actually making the bike turn. The interesting thing about Carmichael, he's not going to be riding next week. He's only riding an abbreviated season, but he still works super hard each week to win. Ricky, to oh, Nick Way, or David Billiman. That's David Billiman down very hard. He's moving a little bit. He might have uh, came uh, through the, the rhythm section, the Astros medical crew right there to take a look at David. Meanwhile, up front, James Stewart. Stewart doing just what he has to do to get out front here, stay clean, stay away from the other riders. He's going to come through this rhythm section where Billman's down. Now, the riders will still run through the section, but no passing can take place during that section where there's an injured rider there being attended to. I had a long conversation with James's dad, affectionately known by everybody in the sport as Big James, as to where the future is. Well, let's go back and take a look first at what happened to David Billiman. They were on board with Michael Byrne. Coming through here by the finish line, these guys got a pretty heated battle going on. Billman opts to the right side as he comes in. He single triples and he comes up short and goes over the bars hard. Just drives himself into up face of one of them jumps. They're going to red flag the race to get more medical attention to David. Now this is something that we uh, have not seen. 
Well, while the red flag is out, the race will come to a stop. We'll take the opportunity to take a quick break, and we'll be back to Phoenix for more after this. After an absolutely vicious crash, David Villeman gets up under his own power and walks off the track. The Astros medical crew doing a great job of attending to David Villeman, and he walks away. We are going to have a full restart after that red flag. 20 fresh laps. Here we go. needed in that in that first start Stuart Holshot and he was waving bye-bye Carmichael needed this to get battle uh, for the main event win here and Carmichael has been the fastest rider inside Chase Field all weekend we'll see now if Stewart can match his pace well we're all gonna get to see the battle that we were hoping would brew here this way we get 20 laps of it these two put on an amazing chase for the championships last year Carmichael ended up winning the AMA series title for the fifth time. Stewart laid claim to the World Supercross Championship for the first time. Listen to the sound of those 450s. When the track gets a little slippery like this, a little bit loose on top, these 450s are just amazing machines. So much horsepower. Chad Reed, by the way, you saw him briefly on the 22 runs in third. Now let's see if Stewart, who was jumping the quad at the end of this next section, let's see if he changes it up here. Nope, stays to the triple. Watch how fast Stewart goes into this next set of whoops right here, way on the left-hand side. That front wheel just sky high, barely skimming it across with the rear wheel. The whoop sections like that is where James Stewart excels over the other riders. He just has the ability to just hang it out, come into those whoops with so much speed. So many people think that James Stewart rides on the edge at all times. And I asked James, I said, James, how close are you to the edge? And he said, you know what? In fact, you probably have never seen me ride on the edge. Really? He said, yep. He said, I have never ridden to my fullest potential in a Supercross race yet. They just, the way the tracks are designed, I cannot ride at my fastest speed. He has more left in the tank, Jeff, if you can believe that. And one of the things everybody asked me, how can James Stewart go so fast? Being a former racer myself, the only, what I come up with is that as the rider is looking at the track and he's going through the obstacles, is that no matter how fast James rides, the track seems like it's, like he's processing the information and the track is going slow. What he's seeing is going slow, so. What he's seeing is how he's gonna pass Ricky Carmichael as they come over the finish line jump, side by side. Gives him a little bit of room there. I think he had the opportunity to maybe rub him a little bit there as they complete the first lap, but they were being real nice to each other, actually. They always have been. They don't seem to, when they go part to bar, they don't really push each other physically too hard. And I think that that's a uh, respect that they have for each other. Uh, they realize that that's not going to get him anywhere except going backwards. It's interesting when you talk to Carmichael, the nickname, the GOAT, greatest of all time, but he will tell you he doesn't consider himself the greatest Supercross rider on the planet. He says he might be the best when it comes to winning championships. He's won five of them in Supercross. He's very good, he says, at being consistent over the course of the year. But in specific areas, he says, no way am I the greatest. In fact, he'll tell you, Stewart is the fastest, and a rider like Kevin Windham might be the most technical. Yes, I, I definitely agree. This last lap, these guys way off the pace from their best times during the low 41s, and they're a couple seconds off right now. That just shows that the track's getting very slippery. And, uh, 
does that give an edge to either one of these riders? Is either one better when the track gets slippery? No, I don't think so. We're looking at the two greatest Supercross riders on the planet. And uh, right now, it's much better to be where James Stewart is, believe it or not. He gets a chance to pace himself and watch Ricky Carmichael's lines and figure out some places where he can make the pass. It's, uh, it's a nervous position to be up front because you don't know what the guy is doing behind you. You don't know if he's moving around. You don't know if he's letting it all hang out or if he's doing it very easy. One thing, though, Jeff, is it's very difficult to pressure Ricky Carmichael into a mistake. Yeah, he's, he's been around a long time. He's had plenty of pressure, and he deals with it well. I think the two sections are going to be the whoops. And uh, just, I think James Stewart is setting up Carmichael for the second set of whoops. I think he's where we talked about the inside line is left open. Stewart's been making it, making himself a line on the inside each lap. Here comes Stewart. He's got to pass that time. Well, he chose the first set. Stewart takes the lead, and you can hear the crowd in Chase Field cheering loudly as they exchange the lead. Now, can Carmichael mount a challenge back? We talked about how they worked so hard on this Makita Suzuki to get that front end to load better so he could get through the corners better. Does it seem to be working for him? Well, at first, I sure thought so, but uh, Ricky commented that last week that Stewart just seemed to be able to turn the bike lower out of the berms and get get going down the straight sooner. And Ricky was still he was driving deeper into the turns, and I think that's happening a little bit again uh, tonight. James Stewart on the monster Kawasaki out front leading here in Phoenix, licking the sweet back-to-back -back weekends, winning at the last round at Phoenix, and now looking to back it up here in Anaheim and Phoenix. Here's a progressive hole shot replay. And you see Jeff DeMitt coming from way on the outside here, staying on the gas, just beating James Stewart to the line with a progressive direct hole shot award. And the pass for the lead was completed like this. Like I said, St Stewart just comes into these whoops so fast. He just entered with so much speed. Carmichael had nothing for him at the going into the turn. Closing in on the halfway point here, Chase Field. James Stewart continues to lead. We'll be right back for more after this. Phoenix, the yeah, Mobile Supercross Series in action in Chase Field. James Stewart leading on his Kawasaki. Yeah, this battle for the lead has just been so good. We stayed up there. We're going to get a chance to see some uh, third and fourth right now. I'm sorry, fourth and fifth. Kevin yes. Windham and Ferry. Best battle on the racetrack. Windham on the red Honda, number 14. Here comes Ferry, Stewart's teammate on the Monster Kawasaki team. On the number 15. We talked about how much pressure was on Kevin Windham and joining that battle, Travis Preston on the red number 11. Here's Ferry, oh, he tried to get inside, couldn't get it done. And Michael Byrne with our helmet cam on the Rockstar Suzuki is right at the end of that pack. These guys, you know, I, I really thought that these guys had a lot to prove tonight, and uh, so far they're battling it out. Riding with Michael Byrne. Barry again applying the pressure to Wyndham. Preston on that number 11 had the factory ride at Kawasaki that Barry now has. Look at this section. These guys, some of these jumps here, it's just incredible that they can race each other, battle, you know, wheel to wheel through, uh, you know, what are some pretty tough obstacles and some pretty tough sections. How much of that has been the improvement of the riders or the motorcycles it's over just, the years? It's just the evolution of the sport, but there is no doubt in my mind that the 450 machines here in the last couple of years have made some huge improvements. They have so much low-end torque, not to mention great horsepower, but the torque allows them to ride the machine at a lower RPM and get more traction on a slippery track like this. Preston coming around Ferry. Remember, he lost that factory ride just this past winter to Ferry. So a little bit of personal revenge there to get back in front of that green number 15. 
Preston so close to the podium last week with a fourth place. Really seems to be comfortable and, and uh, happy riding for Factory Connection again, which is a team that he has a lot of success with as a lights rider. I would say Gresson is actually Mike the Bird that lost that ride. Yes, yes, correct. These guys uh, still pretty close. Look like Barry and Byrne backed off a little bit there that lap. But a couple, couple of Honda riders. I'm sorry, Jeff. for the Honda Supremacy. I'm sorry, Jeff. It's actually Michael Byrne that's closing in on Ferry now. So that storyline does come back into play as Byrne tries to get around Ferry. Here comes Preston on the outside of Wyndham. I would look for both of these guys to race each other pretty clean. They're both teammates. And actually, what they have in common is they're two of the taller riders on, on the circuit. They uh, have uh, similar riding styles because of that. Is that an advantage on the bigger 450? Well, you got to think so, because these bikes are so much to handle. But, uh, you know, along with being that tall, usually comes wearing a pretty big boot. Makes it, uh, you know, they have to extend the shift levers, the brake levers, things like that. Preston, five, gets around Wyndham. That's for four. And Byrne closing in. Looks like Byrne has gotten around Ferry. He was now chasing after Wyndham. And Carmichael has closed the gap back up on James Stewart. Less than a second between the two. I think we're going to see Ricky Carmichael. He's always talked about he wants to be in it in the last five laps, and he feels that his advantage is in his fitness and his mental strength. Here's back to Michael Byrne now, battling with Kevin Windham, and Byrne gets around him. That should move him up to six. Well, if Kevin Windham wasn't happy with the performance last week, he's not going to be thrilled with this one either. Yeah, he really seems to have, uh, if he doesn't have an injury or, or a mechanical, uh, he just seems to be off the pace, maybe lost a little bit of mental focus. No problems with that for James Stewart tonight. The hardest thing they say for James is to learn how to ride just fast enough to win. There's no doubt he has speed. But keeping it in control just to get to the finish is the thing the team is working on the most with him. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. He just he just shows so much speed. And if you look at certain races last year, that if he just backed his lap time down a little bit, uh, maybe rode a little more comfortable, uh, you know, he still would have won the races. So where's Chad Reed? Here he is, the Australian rider with the hurt shoulder. Gutting out another third place finish. He's, Such an impressive run. Yeah, Chad's in uh, third place right now, doing what he has to do to maximize his points, but it's 25 seconds off of the leader right now. But Chad is thinking big picture. He's here to win a championship, and he knows by continuing to run to continue to make his way onto the podium each and every week, instead of just trying to nurse himself back to health, he keeps himself alive in this championship. Very much alive at that. Reed, of course, knows what it takes to win championships. He's done it before. Looking for another one here this year. And he really brought everybody up in Toronto when he took the season opening run. Here's Ivan Tedesco now. This is Stuart, or uh, Carmichael's teammate getting inside a window. They make a little contact. And Tedesco gets by. Boy, it has been a rough night for Kevin Windham. And, and he, here is Stewart on his final lap. Yeah, Windham just getting lapped here. He's in the middle of this battle for the lead. Stewart looking for back-to-back -back wins. He is currently lapped all the way up to eighth. Oh, and Tedesco and him get together. That was very interesting. I think to I see James Stewart looking over to his right, making Tedesco wasn't going to come into play, but... Checkered flag for James Stewart. Back-to-back -back wins for the Kawasaki rider. Carmichael finishes a close second. Just over a second behind him. Stewart is very happy. He's definitely shown that uh, 
he's got the speed and he's putting it, it together. You see Ivan Tedesco here, what he's saying is, hey, I was looking back, I didn't think you were going to cut down. I was afraid that was going to happen. So right now they're just sorting it out that that wasn't an intentional. And remember, they came together in practice in Toronto, and that's what hurt Tedesco's hand. So that's a big moment there to clear the air. Yeah, that could have that could have been uh, really tricky there. Let's show you what happened there between the two. So Tedesco's thinking Stewart's going to go wide. I've been watching Stewart. He's been cutting down every lap. So Tedesco's trying to get out of the way, and they just came together. Here's a look at our Suzuki results. Suzuki's Ricky Carmichael finishes in second behind the Kawasaki of James Stewart, and Yamaha's Chad Reed comes home in third with the Honda Travis Preston in fourth. Now let's head down to Aaron. Well, the lucky number seven took the lead on lap seven. James, a little bit of bumping and grinding going out there between you and Ivan Tedesco. Were you expecting that retaliation? <laughs> you know, it's always in the back of my mind, you know, something like that can happen. But, you know, even like if he got me back on purpose, no hard feelings on my part. You know, like I told him I was sorry after the end of the race, even though he hit me. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have any grudge to him, but I got the job done. That's what that was counts. And uh, after the red flag, it was good to put my head back down and uh, work hard. Well, it's been 20 years since Kawasaki has won the first two rounds, and the man to do it is this man, James Stewart. He pulls it off here tonight. It's all part of the road to Las Vegas. Just one more stop as we make our way to Sam Boyd Stadium, first weekend in May, to wrap up the championship chases. Let's show you how the point standings look as we complete the night here in Phoenix in the World GP point standings. The reigning champ, James Stewart, has a one-point lead over Ricky Carmichael. Chad Reed, another good performance here tonight, sits only seven markers behind. In the AMA standings, James looking to win that title for the first time, and he's got a six-point lead over the man who is the reigning title holder there, Ricky Carmichael, who's with Aaron. Well, he wanted more than anything to go out on top this weekend here in Phoenix. Phoenix is normally good to you, Ricky, but tonight, a battle like no other. Yeah, we had an awesome battle, and uh, I just didn't have it. I mean, he was ruining me in the turn before the whoops over there, and, uh, you know, I tried taking that line and just couldn't pull it off. But, you know, I tried my hardest, and uh, that's what I'm happy about. You know, the Suzuki was uh, good. We worked and worked this week, and the bike was a lot better. And... Uh, you know, happy to get out here safe. Uh, Would have liked to win, but uh, all you can do is do your best. And uh, just, man, I want to get a win, but uh, you can only do all you can do. Ricky Carmichael taking home second place and looking forward to sitting in the stands at Anaheim, too. Here's a look at our Toyota moving forward replay. This is how the pass for the lead was done. James Stewart, a tremendous run through the very challenging loop section, beats Carmichael to the corner, gets the drive out into the lead and was never challenged from that point on as he takes back-to-back -back wins in two weekends. For Jeff Emig and Aaron Baines, I'm Ralph Shaheen. So long from Phoenix, where James Stewart is your winner. CBS Sports coverage of the M's Mobile AMA Supercross Series continues next Sunday with Anaheim 2 at 1 p.m. Eastern.